As we continue looking at our uncertain economy, there are questions about how to best save for retirement. Lana Zach joins us now to explain some options. Hey there, Matt. You may have heard that the best time to start saving for retirement is yesterday. Because according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, two-thirds of households approaching retirement have not saved enough. Part of the problem is confusion over how to save. So let's dive into 401ks and IRAs to empower you to understand your retirement resources. All right, a 401k is an account set up by your workplace. You choose how much money per paycheck to put aside for retirement. The average 401k contribution is about 7% of a yearly income, but many financial experts encourage investing between 10 to 15% if you can afford it. Employers may also contribute to the program, usually adding a spe specific percentage or, this is key, matching employee contributions. That's money that you don't want to leave on the table. An IRA is a retirement account that you open yourself and grow over decades until your retirement. If you're younger than 50, you can contribute up to $6,000 a year. Older Americans have an annual limit of $7,000. Both 401ks and IRAs generally fall into two categories, traditional and Roth. The main difference is when you pay taxes on those funds. For a traditional account, the contributions are tax deductible now, but you will eventually pay taxes when that money is withdrawn. With a Roth IRA, you pay the tax bill upfront on the amount invested. In general, you want the traditional option if you think that you're going to be in a lower tax bracket during retirement. If you're starting off your career, you may want to opt for a Roth. And remember, of course, the most important thing is that savings are compounded. So the more you save now, the more your nest egg will continue to grow in the future. Lana Zach, thank you. Now we have the basics of the most common retirement plan. So let's talk about how to build them up and how much people need it. For more, Harold Pollack joins me now. He's a professor at the University of Chicago and a co-author of The Index Card, Why Personal Finance Doesn't Have to be Complicated. All right, Harold, so if someone started a 401k at the age of, say, 30 and plans to retire mm -hmm. at around 65, how much money should be in their retirement account? Well, I think that... that we all should try to save absolutely as much as we can. You know, the 401k is the absolute workhorse. I think most of us believe that the employer side and the employee side should add up to be about 20% of, of your pre-tax income for you to be able to retire in a way that's kind of consistent with the lifestyle that you've had as a worker. By the way, that was such a wonderful primer uh, that we just heard. I think, I hope all of your viewers were watching closely because I just thought that that was an excellent uh, description of the basics of it. And so ironically, a lot of people call me and ask me questions, what should I invest in? That's actually the easy part. You just invest in low fee index funds in your 401k or your Roth IRA, but you really try to do absolutely as much as you can. You know, for, uh, if, you're, if you're under the age of 50, you can save up to $21,000 uh, per year uh, in your 401k. If you're over that, you can save about 27,000. And you know, if you just start early and take advantage of that compounding, that, that just makes a huge difference. I only wish I had done that in my own life. I must say I started around age 40 and it's really hard to catch up, uh, you know, when you lose all the, mm. all the benefit of that early compounding. And that Happy adds day. up. I mean, once you start to do that at an earlier age, especially. So how much money does mm -hmm. the average person need to retire? Well, you know, I, I think that's a funny question because, because, uh, you know, we, I would like to say everybody should have a million dollars when they retire. That's not always possible because, mm. of course, you know, most of us have, you know, have the income that we have. But I would say saving 20 percent of your income is really important. And finding ways to get your mojo to save effectively is just so important. It's partly watching the big things like your home and your car. And it's also finding ways to be methodical and and you know, and just and just to stay at it slow and steady and find ways. We all know our own vulnerabilities and our and what motivates us uh, as individuals, uh, you know, to save effectively. So, you know, I was talking with a, one of the people that I work with at the University of Chicago. She's a single mom. She has a pretty modest income. And, you know, we were talking about how she could best save. And it turns out that the Roth IRA that was just described as a great option for her. Uh, one of the things that we talked about is how she can, uh, really on a day-to-day -day basis, save her money. And one of the things we talked about was uh, 
there's a really beautiful sweater in the in the in the window of one of the fancy shops in Chicago on the Magnificent Mile. It's a hundred and forty dollars sweater, and it was really tempting to buy that sweater. But she was realizing, you know, that's really not a very smart thing for me to be doing. I should be saving that money. And so we, we talked about it. And I said, you know, why don't you bring your daughter with you? And you can look at that nice sweater and you can say to your daughter, you know, that sweater would be awesome for me. It goes perfectly with my skin tone. It's great, but I'm not going to buy that sweater. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that $140 and yeah, I'm going to put it lesson. in your right. college account. Yeah. And someday you're going to do that for your daughter. And now you've taken this moment where I'm, I have to kind of deny myself something, which is which is not that, that fun. And I made it into a really cool parenting moment mm. that my daughter's going to remember that I'm going to remember. And so thinking about, you know, how can I save most effectively so that I can take advantage of that 401k and the Roth IRA. Uh, the Roth IRA is such a great option because it gives you that strategic reserve. You know, as, as was mentioned, you can the money that you put in, you can actually take out without penalty if you need it, if you have a family emergency or something like that. And the, and the investment gains that you get will never be taxed. So those Roth IRAs are just a really wonderful option for people, particularly if your tax rate right now is pretty low, if you have a modest income. So the immediate tax advantage of the traditional IRA isn't that much. Uh, and all of a sudden you've got, you know, you've put that, you created that foundation. You've got that money growing over, over years and years that you can use. So how, how, are, how can people better maximize their contributions to both 401ks and mm -hmm. IRAs? One is to make it automatic. You want to, you don't, once you get your fingers on money, it's very easy to spend it. Right. So what you want to do is have that money taken out of your paycheck and automatically deposited into a low fee index fund. Uh, and, and so you just never touch it. You never have to think about it. It just becomes part of your life. If you get a raise, the amount of money that you just got in your raise, put that aside, keep living the way you're living. And, and you can enjoy the fact that you got a raise, but you don't have to spend more money just mm. because your employer is giving you more money. And I, I think keeping it automatic is just absolutely uh, the easiest way for many of us to save. Once it's once it's kind of in your fingers, it's just it's just much easier to waste it on things that uh, you know that are not really in our long term interest to spend on. All right, so much good information from you and from Alana, as you said, Harold Pollock. Harold, thank you.